Okay, what you're going to learn in this tutorial is how to take a picture of an isometric background like this, uh, bring that background into Krita, use Krita's ability to slice this background up into even pieces, which will give you a result something like this. By having the background split up into different pieces, this makes it easier for uh, game engines like GDevelop 5 to be able to load the background in. Once you have this background sliced up, you're going to be shown how to go to GDevelop, how to have the background be put together. You're also going to learn how to make a player character that can walk around this background. You're going to learn how to make areas that keep that uh don't allow the player character to walk through. So these green blocks you see right here will be placed over buildings. They can be placed over whatever you, you want the player character to not walk through. Uh, so once you have all that, pretty much what you're going to end up with is what you see in front of you, where the your player character can walk around the environment. The camera will follow your player character. But the camera will only follow your player character within the limits of the screen. If your player character tries to walk through a building, they'll be stopped. They won't be able to walk through a building, but they will be able to walk around the rest of the environment. Then when they get to the edge of the environment, the camera will stop. And... Uh, the camera will restart following the player character once they get far enough away from the edge. Hi, this is Ali Arango of Game Visuals as well as LittleGuyCGI.com. Today I would like to show you how to make easy isometric backgrounds in Krita as well as use those isometric backgrounds in GDevelop 5. So let's get started. Okay, what I'm about to show you here, I don't know if I would recommend you to use this inside of a actual full finished game. However, this should help you as far as working on a game, particularly an isometric game. Uh, just getting you working and giving you a background uh, that you can work with and uh, being able to set up that background fairly easily. Okay, to begin this process off, what we're going to do is we're going to go to Google. We're then going to search for Google Maps, then press Enter. So here's Google Maps right here. Okay, here we are inside of Google Maps. We're going to go to the search bar in the upper left. You're in New York. So we can see New York right here, right? I uh, We're over New York and we are in Google Maps because uh, basically we can use Google Maps to get quick areas, particularly of areas like uh, city areas. And... Uh, Right here, when we, we look at Google Maps, it looks like a regular map. So what we're going to do is go to our upper left-hand corner, left-click, and then we're going to, where it clicked on map, we're going to select satellite. So here we have a satellite view. So now you can see that we have a uh, a view that looks more like terrain that you would see like in a game. Okay, so what we want to do is I'm going to, the way we can navigate around Google Maps is if you left click and drag, you can drag the area around. We're going to look at New York here. So this is the area where this is a general area of New York City. We're going to zoom in. As we zoom in, we can see that things get uh, clearer, like Google makes them look clearer. So we have all of these different uh, labels right here right now. We're going to look towards right here. This is the Brooklyn Bridge, right? This area right where the uh, Brooklyn Bridge comes 
up next to the seaport. So now what we're going to do is go to our upper left. We have these three lines here. We're going to left click there. And then we're going to look to where we see this labels on. We're going to left click to turn that off. So now we don't have any labels blocking our view. Okay, so this is the Brooklyn, this should, yeah, this should be the Brooklyn Bridge. You can always go here and then I'll uh, turn the labels back on. Yep, so there's the Brooklyn Bridge. I'll click, then turn this back off. So now what we want to do is I'm looking at this area right here. I'm going to zoom in, right? So we have this top-down view, not quite isometric. However, look to your lower right. See this thing that says 3D? We're going to left-click here. And now you can see we have this isometric like view here this particular area right here I like this area because we're gonna use Google Maps to get our isometric background and uh, what I like about this area is there's space in between the buildings the buildings aren't so high right in this area where you can't see the uh, the street so basically to manipulate your view if you roll your mouse you can zoom in you can zoom out if you left click and drag you can drag around we are on the website for uh, Google Maps. This is just a website. Uh, so it's nice because as long as you have access to Google, as far as I know, you can get to this website. Uh, and then if you hold the control key on your keyboard, what you can do is rotate as well as rotate the view. So you can control how isometric the view is. Okay, so what we want to do is make sure we have the best area. Uh, and what we want to do is get a sc screenshot, right? So this area here I like because the buildings aren't too high. However, I do think I'm zooming back out. So here is the Brooklyn Bridge. I'm going past the Brooklyn Bridge, past the bridge right here, which very cool with Google Maps is, I mean, you pretty much have the entire planet. What you'll find with Google Maps is, is that certain places have uh, more 3D-ness to the terrain than others. So this is... A, the, uh, let's see, let's turn the labels back on. So this is the Williamsburg Bridge here. Just turn the labels back off. There was an area over here. Yeah, see these two things here? Uh, not sure what those are, so I'm zooming in. I'm holding control to rotate the view. And what I like was this is more city area. However, the streets are wider here, so this will give us a more room to play with as far as our isometric background. So the areas are more open here. I'm just left clicking and dragging. Okay, I'm going to go even more to the uh, right. There's more open area here, and I like this because I think we can get more of a side isometric uh, view uh, here. Cause there's open space here. So I'm going to hold control, go more to the side. And uh, what I'm, what you want to do is you want to look at. I'm going to roll the mouse wheel back. Areas where your character can move through, like here, here, there's different spots where uh, there's elements that we can use where our character can freely move. So this is nice right here. Okay, so since we have our area, area picked, we want to pick a, I mean, a, get a screenshot area, eh, screenshot pick of this area. So to do that, if you're using a Windows computer, I'm going to search for SNP, just S-N-I-P. Here's the snipping tool. I'm going to left click there. This menu pops up. I'm going to select new. I'm going to be aware of this red pipe looking object here as well as these trees. And what I want to do is I'm going to left click and drag. of this area here. I'm then going to go to File, Save. 
save this to where, someplace where I know it's going to be. All right. So this is a folder that I have picked for these uh, pictures. I'm going to name this one and then click save. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is minimize the snip tool. I am going to look here, this area here. I'm going to pull this over not too far because as you pull the area over, your perspective will change. I'm going to take the snipping tool again. I'm then going to click new. Grab another screenshot. Then select file, save as, name this two, then click save. Okay, what I'm thinking is, is we're probably not going to use this screenshot. However, we have this if we want to add additional background onto the area we're working with. Okay, so we have what we need as far as our screenshot. So I'm going to go to the upper right, close that uh, snip tool. I'm going to click the uh, button to the right to close the uh, Google Maps tool. Now we're going to bring our images into Krita. Okay, if you don't know what Krita is, Krita is an open source image manipulation tool. It is very nice. It is very, uh, looks very professional. Krita is spectacular. You can get Krita totally for free. Uh, if you want to donate to Krita, you can. However, you can get Krita totally for free. I uh, just wanted to show you the website where you would go to download Krita. So this is it. It is uh, HTTPS colon slash slash krita.org you know for me slash en slash so you can come here and download krita okay here we are inside of krita if you've used uh, photoshop before krita is very similar to photoshop if you've used gimp before uh, krita is very similar to gimp So what we want to do is go to File, Open. Then we want to go to our folder that has our screenshots in, in it. So I have mine here in this isometric backgrounds tutorial. I'm going to left click here. So it's number one. So I'm going to left click on number one and then click Open. Okay, the reason why we are bringing this uh, screenshot into Krita is because we have a fairly large image like this. You want to make things as easy as possible for something like a, a program like uh, GDevelop5. Suppose you wanted to have this entire, not just what you see here, but like the area above this area, below this area, to the side of this area, to the left of this area. You could bring this all into GDevelop5, or if you're using another uh game engine you could bring it into there however i would not recommend that you bring it in all as one image i would recommend that you bring the image uh that you would do bring the image into a program like krita and then break the image up and that's why we're here into krita so we're going to break this image up into separate pieces uh so that this is easier to use uh when you bring this into a game engine 